So we're here today at Medlands Fishery on Lambsdowne Pool, peg uh, one I believe it is, um, for a spot of feeder fishing. Conditions are far from ideal with it being bright and, and flat, but we're going to run through a few little hints and tips to hopefully get the most out of your feeder fishing. So something that I think is overlooked when you feed a fish in, um, we naturally think, oh, I'm going to chuck as tight as I can to the far bank in. Um, but I've had it before, places like White Acres on Jenny Slate, where it's really, really shallow against the island. People have been chucking there for an hour, and then you see someone, uh, see a duck stand up where they're chucking the feeder. So I think it's really important when you go into a new venue um, and you're unsure of the depth that you're fishing in to actually plumb up. So to check what depth we're fishing in, I've set up my rig at two and a half foot deep. I've got a Fox, I believe they're the dead bait pop up uh, to pop your dead baits up, a nice foam ball that's nice and light. I've set that two and a half foot deep and then just clipped a 30 gram lead so we can whack that across that far bank in. And obviously if it's going to show, we'll know we're going to be fishing in shallow water than two and a half foot. I can scale that down to say 18 inches, the minimum that I want to be fishing in today really. Um, and if it's still showing, we know we need to come further off the bank to get in the depth of water that's desired. So with this method of plumbing up, you can gauge if you've got a real cliff face or you've got a nice gradual slope as well. So we cast it out, we're, we're presuming we can see the, the ball, so it's under two and a half foot deep, and then I can just drag the, the bomb back slightly and see if the, the ball is still showing. Um, obviously, if the ball's pulled under, it's gonna be deeper than that. And if it falls away really quickly, we're gonna have a, a, a quick drop off and the, we aren't gonna see the poly ball at all. So you can just gauge how um, sharp that cliff face shelf is on that far banking without going around and physically plumb, plumbing up. So when clipping up, when setting up, um, casting out a empty feeder isn't going to be the same as casting a loaded feeder. So it's really important when you're clipping up to that far bank margin um, to use a bomb. And with the, the matrix interchangeable system, they'll work off the same stem system. Here at Medlands today, we can use a elasticated feeder. Um, so it'd just be a case of clipping a bomb on. If you're using a inline alloy feeder or a method feeder, instead of having to break down to, to cast out and plumb up, because some fisheries you're not allowed to actually chuck a feeder out before the start of the match, It'd just be a case of sliding the bomb on and off and put in the open alloy on the, uh, on the stem system there. But as I say today, we can just clip, clip a normal bomb on, but it's nice and handy and nice and quick if you wanted to change, say like a pellet feeder or a method feeder as well. So another point, when fish are feeding really well, there's no point sitting on your hands and leaving your feeder in, getting your sandwiches out, getting the newspaper out, if you want to be really active and catch loads of fish. So having a clock on your side tree and being really strict with your casting. So casting, today we say we're casting every 90 seconds because the fish are really active. If they're wanting loads of feed, so we've been really, really proactive with the casting not leaving it in there longer than 90 seconds. Um, and don't be afraid if you've, got, if you've come short of your clip or it's gone miles to the left or miles to the right, just crank it back in and recast because there's no point leaving it where you don't want it to be. So method feeder fishing, everyone thinks, oh, we've got to chuck it to the far bank or we've got to chuck it as far as we possibly can. An area of the peg with method fishing that's normally overlooked is that short line, that, that line that you fish top kit into on the pole. Um, but deep venues like Hayfield, like Larford Specimen Lake, where you have a lot of tow, a lot of wind, um, and it's really deep where you can't present a rig properly, by just plopping that method feeder on that short line where those fish naturally want to be, you can have perfect presentation. It can work really well to catch those big fish early on in the session and later on in the session when they're not wanting to come down the edge. So one final point with fishing method on the short line is making sure you have your drag set really, really loose because they're really aggressive bites. If you can have it set like you would when you're fishing across, where you haven't got the stretch of the line because you're fishing at short distance, you're just going to end up with your rod being dragged in or your hook length being destroyed. So make sure you have your clutch set nice and loose so it can bow wave out into the lake nice and naturally and you're going to get those fish in and just tighten up once you've uh, connected with your fish.
So hook length choice and hook length material is really important when you method feed a fish in. Here at Medellin's the fish are big and they're angry so we want proper set up. There's no point messing about with light lines because it's only a short length of line and they're coming over the feeder and we don't want to get broken. So we've got a MXC3 in a size 12, a nice strong hook with an outturned eye um, and that's geared up with 022 power micron. Um, Something else that's really important and is normally overlooked is having a small tub of water on your side tray. This aids two purposes. Um, we mainly fish in with semi-buoyant hook baits, um, so the wowsers in different sizes. Engaging that for the size of hook and stuff, we, would, we don't want the hook bait itself to be popping up. If I wanted it to be popped up, I'd put a pop up on. So we can gauge that in the water, so I can put my made up rig in the water and I can see Obviously you can't see there, but the hook bait itself is literally just sitting above the hook, so perfectly how we want it. Um, and then that also aids when we actually break, uh, when we set up the method, so we load, load it with pellets, like so. Um, we're fishing in shallow water today, so I haven't put them on very hard, and we're going to be casting regularly as well, so we want that to break down pretty quick. And we can gauge that in the tub of water instead of having guesswork, so we can literally have a spare one in the tub of water, um, with a little clock on the side tray there, I can see in my eyes it's breaking down already and we're going to be casting probably every 90 seconds today because I want in some feed. And it just really aids um, breakdown times and stuff like that. If you were fishing in deeper water, you could squeeze your pellets much harder and if you're looking, carp trying to escape out my net there, or if you're looking to avoid small fish on the way down with them pecking at your feed or whatever, you can really cram those pellets on to make sure they get into the bottom. A real simple tip, but one that I feel would really help you fishing. So with most venues these days, it's fishery pellets, and where allowed, I like to add a little bit of ground bait to my pellets, because you, you're, you're never sure the quality of the fishery pellets are either going to be, or could be, really sticky, and adding ground bait can help them want to peel away from the feeder. But on the other hand, um, if the pellets don't want to bind very well, by putting some ground bait into it and just wetting the ground bait up slightly, it helps them bind as well and just gives it that little bit of extra fishy attraction. Um, just some swim stain green that is, um, nice little fishy boost. I can squeeze them on um, to different compression levels dependent on how aggressive the small fish are or the depth of water that I'm fishing as well. Um, and by gauging it with my little tub of water, I can get them to break down to the speed that I want them to. Hope you've got some tips from today's feeder fishing session. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button.